Welcome to What the Body. Welcome to What the Body. I'm Caitlin. I'm Jess. And this is our incredible, incredible friend, Cara. Cara Richardson Whiteley, welcome to the show. Oh my gosh, what an honor to be here. I miss you both so we much. We miss you. We miss sure. you desperately. Wish you weren't so far away. <laughs> I know. That's for sure. It is It is only an hour and 15 uh, plane ride. We might pop up. Yeah, I would love that. If you just surprise me at my doorstep, that would be like the greatest day. And <laughs> yeah. Time. Don't tempt don't us. Don't tempt us with a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Literally don't tempt us because we will. <laughs> hey, I'm coming out there. <laughs> exactly. We're going to make a, a tour. We'll see you. We'll go over and see Kelly. Yeah. Oh yeah. It'll be a surprise. Let's give everybody okay. the 411. <laughs> yeah. So Kara is a speaker, an influencer, a journalist, a three-time book author. <laughs> And um, her last book, Gorge, is uh, Chrissy Metz is going to be producing and starring in a movie about that book. So um, tell us. Yeah. Talk to us are, about it. We are so excited you're yeah, here. We're so proud to have you. It's super exciting. Um, you know, I, I think the Oscars um, the other day, they just, it was just the Oscars, and they were talking about everything, everywhere, all at once, taking I think something like 13 years to make. And if that's yeah. the case, then our movie is right on schedule. <laughs> <laughs> love that. We love that for you. Yeah. It's such a process to tell one's story and then have it shared by other folks. And um, yeah. it's a beautiful process uh, and it's fun, but it just takes a lot of patience. It does. So in the meantime, I'm focusing on my agency, the gorgeous agency, yes. which helps brands connect with the extended sizes market, which of course is on trend to be a trillion dollar industry and is often untapped yes. by marketers, by brands, by services, by travel places. It's just such an amazing segment of the population that has long memories and deep pockets. So yes. I'm spending my time just really focusing on that in between movie meetings. Yes. <laughs> well, and you've been, we met two years ago and you've been super helpful with Hickey and you both are on the Hickey advisory board, which has been amazing and helpful for me to learn and grow and help the brand as well. So highly recommend Cara for, for that kind of stuff. But So when you are uh, working with brands to really expand their sizing and their inclusion, um, obviously... <laughs> We've spent our whole lives feeling not seen and not heard. What's the first thing that you kind of address when you are meeting with these new brands and, and talking to them about inclusion and what that actually should feel like? Right. That's a great question, Caitlin. I mean, because I think that so many brands focus on like, okay, you know, we're a clothing brand, so we just need to make more sizes, mm. right? And there's a whole equation about fit and um, the amount right. of, of different sizing you want to have in your marketplace. But where the Gorgeous Agency really specializes is the customer journey. Because mm. I think what brands and people in straight size bodies just don't understand, and it's okay, you, you've never had this lived experience, you don't understand the amount of trauma yes. <laughs> that has been experienced by people in larger bodies, uh, in, in travel, in, in the retail space, in just healthcare, healthcare alone. alone. And so to be able to repair that customer journey, take time, it takes trust. It takes a process of mm -hmm. understanding like, where are the gaps and opportunities with this market? But then how do we rebuild that trust? Yeah. It's a real art and a science because yeah. it's not just a, if you build it, they will come kind of equation. Which Very of much course, that. Yeah. yeah. Like the, the old Navy. I was example. just going to say the old Navy thing, man, we yeah, just had this conversation. Yeah. And I walked in um, and obviously old Navy gap athlete, they're all under the same umbrella. And I love our Athleta store here, Athleta, however you pronounce it. And they were carrying plus sizes. And I walked into shop last week, just a few days ago. They didn't have a single thing above an XL, not one. And I was like, Why? what happened? And she was like, well, they're still here. I said, can you show me? She had two pieces that were a 2X, two in the entire store. And I said, so you want me to go back to shopping online? And she was like, we can order it and have it shipped here. I said, I want to walk out with it today. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here. Or it's I can just I'm order here. online myself. Literally. Also, she, I can't try it on. Uh, yeah. She's like, oh, we can order in store. I was like, if I wanted to shop online, I would just stay at home. I wouldn't have driven to the mall. I was so frustrated. And I think a lot of us have that same experience with Old Navy because yeah. they had it. 
Then they didn't all of a sudden. And it was so sneaky how they just started to like kind of pull them back. And all of a sudden it was like, nope, sorry, you can shop online again. And it's just this whiplash of just continuous. I don't know. It's such a weird experience. It's such a bait and switch that um, it's hard to get folks to wrap their brains around what it's like to be an extended size of shopper and how like you can buy that online is not even a consolation prize. It's an insult. Mm. So, you know, two things here. So imagine, you know, you're, you're suiting up to go to the mall. There's all the things that happen when you want to go to a store, right? First of all, you need to kind of get over the fact of the times that you've been shamed in the past and you haven't been able to find your size or, you know, you had a party or an event that you need to go to and you need something now, not a week from right. now, mm-hmm. not two weeks from now with the return window mm-hmm. and the back and forth. And maybe that's three weeks. I mean, gosh, processing takes so much time. It does. But so if you, I was having a conversation with a friend the other day that it's almost like if you are just referring all of your people in larger bodies, which 67% of U.S. women are size 14 and above. More than half. Yeah. yeah sending them all online it's kind of like a straight size shopper having to go to the store and they want to try on let's say seven things and let's say the average price of each thing is maybe over a hundred dollars yeah it's like you're asking them to hand over their credit card and charging like a thousand bucks yeah just to try them to try on and get one thing that works right right that's, you know, if I were trying things on the store, I'd probably pick like six or seven things. Is this going to work? Is this going to work with that? Mm-hmm. And so to shop online, you're outlying so much cash, yeah. you know, and, and holding it up in the process. And then there's the time to return it, the restocking fee, the, you know, <sighs> that other one that you try and also doesn't work. And it's such a pain in the tush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Say on the show, probably anything. But it's yeah, pretty much pain, anything. And it's yeah. so expensive and it's so ridiculous. And and That's so anyway, you're just yeah. you have to rebuild so much trust and 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 also just the experience of it sucks. It, it sucks. It sucks and it's hard to explain. My mom lives in a straight size body. A lot of my friends live in straight size bodies. It's hard to explain that without A getting emotional and B sounding like super bitter. Like, that's Mm -hmm. not, I don't want to come across that way. You know what I mean? But like, it's so hard. I was in the third grade. I wore a woman's size nine and didn't, Mm -hmm. I couldn't find clothes. Right. So we're in the Mervyn's old lady department looking for pants and stuff that'll fit a nine year old. Like not even, what was I? Seven, eight. Yeah. So like from early on people that live in bodies that don't fit traditional sizing, just, it's like, Oh, what are we doing? This is so awkward. Yeah. From work uniforms to yes. sports uniforms. Yep. I mean, I remember being a kid in a larger body and I was athletic. I mean, I, I did varsity soccer. Yeah. I played basketball. I played all four years of high school. Yeah. And yet finding a pair of shorts that worked with the uniform. I mean, that alone, <laughs> yeah. those kind of experiences with clothing, it's just, I, I mean, I, I was saying to friend another friend recently that there's no wonder that I'm so like you know drawn to places like Bath and Body Works and Lush in a mall Mm. because those are the things where I can actually (laughs) physically hold and buy stuff yeah right I'm an accessory queen for that very reason scarves and shoes (laughs) you know that you know you got it I do not need any more scented candles and yet I go in and I look for them simply because it's something that I can physically take home with me that day So, oh, yeah. dang, I don't think I, re- thank you for that. I don't think I realized that. Like, I love shopping for makeup because mm-hmm. of that very reason. It's yeah. tangible and I can take it home. Dang it, I don't think I realized that. Aha moment, baby. Whoa, that's so <laughs> valid. Dang Cara, I'd love, I'd love to take a step back and give um, our listeners just a summary of, you know, your bio. How did you get here? Um, you know, you've, you've written about it. And so if they've read those books, they know. But I'd love for you to, to take us back to, to your story. Oh, sure. So are we going way, way back? <laughs> we can go wherever you want to go, girl. We can go wherever you like. Yeah. <laughs> I love you guys. Um, okay, so 
gosh, I mean, I guess I'd have a, I have had a tortured relationship with my body all of my life. I mean, from the time that I was burned as an 18 month old, um, third degree burns on my body almost died actually. Um, to my complicated relationship with food, which my first memory of binging, and I'm sure it started before this point, was nine years old, and my parents were on the verge of a divorce. And like such a metaphor here, but the only place that I found real comfort was in the pantry because mm. I could, you know, the sounds of chewing would literally drown out their screaming at each other, mm, and this inevitable feeling of like the bottom is just about to drop out of my life like something is about to break and the comfort of food was what held me um, Mm. at that time yeah and the addition to my story and what I know now versus what I knew even you know five years ago was that at that time I also had lipedema and lipedema is you know you know, I, I'm still learning because the diagnosis is so new, yeah, yeah. but the, the most troublesome times are times of um, hormonal spikes. So mm. Q puberty, the time when my binge eating disorder was at its worst, right? Because there were so many unanswered questions. My parents did get divorced. I was sexually assaulted and, and like, yeah. it was a lot, just a lot. Yeah. A lot of trauma and a lot of things that I probably should have been working through with other coping mechanisms, but they did not exist in my mind at the time. Right. Um, So uh, my relationship with food and body was so disjointed, so troubled, so difficult. And I remember, uh, let me back up one more step. Lipedema is one of the reasons why my body is shaped so interestingly. Mm. <laughs> um, people could call it a pear shape, but I mean, I really, I mean, that my top size is almost like two or three sizes smaller than my bottom mm. size. And so lipedema, like fat can, um, or it's diseased fat tissue um, harbors in the um, below your waistline and like really between your knees and your navel. Yeah. And some people get it really strongly in their arms. Uh, mine's mine's not so much, but like mine is usually between my navel and my knees. Okay, so uh, um, so this pattern was happening where I was binging um, and coping with the challenging things that were happening at the time, and of course my body size increased, 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 and so I started to you know as, as I was about to turn thirty, so that's decades of using this as my coping mechanism. Yeah. Um, and I started to realize that I, I was the kind of person who would always say things like when I lose weight, I will. Mm, Right. Right. Yeah. Like when I lose weight, I will buy a new whole new wardrobe. And this one's really common for a lot of people that I talk to around the globe. Um, when I lose weight, I will go to the doctors. Mm. Oh, Mm -hmm. and it was especially apparent to me when I got one of those adventure travel catalogs in the mail. And mm. like I said, I was about to turn 30 and I realized as I was leaping through these glossy pictures of Kilimanjaro, Machu P- uh, Picchu and the Alps, I realized I was saying, when I lose weight, mm. I will go on these adventures. And so Damn. back then I was about to turn 30 and I thought that was getting old. Yeah. <laughs> you were like, no. And I realized, yeah. yep. I realized like, geez, you know, I, I'm never going to do these things if I keep saying this to myself this way. Like, right, I, I, right. I'll put my life on hold it. until X, Y, and Z happens. Yeah. You had a YOLO yeah. moment. Yeah. YOLO, baby. Right. Wow. Yeah, it's like these. Um, this equation doesn't work yeah. anymore. Right. right. And so I decided that I would just start to be if I want to be an outdoorsy kind of hiker girl who does these kinds of things, well, maybe I should just, you know, go outside. <laughs> Put some shoes on and actually go outside. Yeah. Right? Like, (laughs) what a concept. But, you know, like, when Mm -hmm. you're in a larger body and you don't match the marketing, you don't feel like this is a place for you. But for (sighs) me, I was so drawn. My It was like, my my friend and teacher, Cheryl Strayed, says it's almost, you have two beating hearts, right? When she talks Mm. about writing a book. But when it came to the outdoors, like, if I didn't start doing these things, I knew that I would slowly you know, just perish inside, Mm. you know, this like flicker of hope and love and joy would just continue to fade out. 
Yeah. Um, so, so when I started going to the outdoor stores to try to find some things, you know, the only thing I could get was a Nalgene bottle. I just happened to have one here. Like the kind of water bottle that like if I and the Nalgene bottle fell off the mountain at the same time, like it would survive and yeah. I wouldn't. I needed like <laughs> legit. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Because any of that clothing, like it was too... It didn't work. Like I couldn't get a jacket that fit me. I couldn't, even the socks were too tight. Um, Mm. Anytime I'd go into the stores for something like boots, you know, I felt like I needed to give my climbing resume. Oh, (laughs) dang. Like like I, like, you know, I'm, I want to be an outdoorsy kind of person. And as my hikes got more and more, I still feel, felt like I needed to justify my presence in the store and what I wanted to do. And so those first experiences of like having to buy like men's three X, which also did not fit. I mean, the sleeves were like, yeah. (laughs) Slinky arms. Yeah. 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 Right. Dang. I just, I feel like I'm having that experience right now because I, I love to be outdoors. Um, It's super hard to find hiking boots that fit a women's size 12. Mm -hmm. And I've struggled, really struggled And I don't, it's hard to explain, but I'll walk into a store and I'll have that feeling of like, I'm not really a hiker. Um, I just enjoy the outdoors and I want boots that are waterproof and comfortable and something that I'll feel safer in. And we were just in Asheville hiking and I'm in my Nike running shoes and they're like traipsing through the springs and running around and like having the greatest time because the people I was with all had the gear. And I'm just there with my little Nike sneakers slip sliding all over the side of the mountain and soaking wet socks. Like I just felt so stupid, but I walked and dangerous. And dangerous. Yes. And I just walked into these stores and like, they're kind of like, well, you know, unfortunately they go to a 10 or an 11 at the highest. We don't have them in store. And I just feel so silly. And then I just leave. Yeah. So like I've pan, I've even tried pants online. Like I still feel that way in, in times of like, just an outsider. You want to be part of the cool kids. Like I want the gear. I want the, this, I end up with a cool backpack and you know, all the cameras set up. I got my little clip on my thing. And so, you know, I'm in that side of it, but again, I'm accessory queen. I'm right back to the damn accessories. Yeah. There you are with the scented candles. Scented fucking candles. Jesus. Fucking candles. <laughs> fucking candles. <laughs> I have literally, I found a stash of wallflowers the other day. And when I say stash, we're talking like a honey hole. We're talking like 40 wallflowers that I bought for some reason. I don't know what a wallflower is. It's a smelly thing that you plug into the wall. Oh, like, right. what was I doing? It was like I bought the whole store. It's like, it's like I don't you know. Wanted, every time you went into the <laughs> Bath and Body Works, you needed to come out with something. Those I have. They have their own nauseous. basket now. Ugh, oh, I, I like them. them. Mm, I love them. I love them. <laughs> There's only one scent I love. And I think maybe somebody told me that the scent was going out of style. Uh-oh. So I bought them all, apparently. What's oh. the scent? It's the mahogany teakwood. No, I don't know what that smells oh. like. Sounds good. Sounds like mm. sandalwood. It's very, it okay. has hints of sandalwood. It's like, it's like a manly, manly kind of. Manly, musky. Yeah, I love that. Okay. Sensual. I might like that. Mm. All right. Yeah, I think I, I have a problem in that, like, I am drawn to their seasonal scents. So, mm. Fireside Flurries is, like, one of my favorites. Yeah. Oh, and that's like, and then it's gone. And then I'm like, well, see you in December. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be back for you. Yeah. yeah. My joyful I'll be scent. Back is for you, Fireside yeah. Flurries. And if you don't bring it back, yeah. I will have Quite some literally. very strong words <laughs> <laughs> on LinkedIn. Yeah. On LinkedIn. <laughs> Yes. Oh my God. Oh, sorry. I totally derailed that conversation, but yes, the, the feeling of like you're starting your journey and you want to be, you want the things and you just can't get them. It's like, Oh, you deserve them. And that's what car is here to do is advise companies on how to do that better. How is that going? How are you feeling about that? Yeah. I mean, I feel like this is the year I I know that this is the year of body inclusivity where, you know, there's been a lot of really important conversations that have had to happen in the DEI space in these past few years. And, and, um, it's been really hard to, um, to get folks to listen. And that's okay because again, these were really important conversations. But I think now that we are emerging from the pandemic, I guess is the best way that I know to healing say it. from the pandemic, <laughs> healing and seeing ourselves like many of us have different yeah. bodies. And when this whole thing started, many of us 
are in a different mindset. Yeah. And people are really ready to talk about um, bodies and and the fact that all bodies belong. Yes. And, that, that. and not only that, you know, here we are in a time of potential economic downturn. So companies yeah. really need to look at new growth because this isn't just like a, a feel good kind of operation no. here. I yeah. mean, we're driving new business, we're connecting with new customers. And so I'm really heartened to learn things like um, the booking.com commercial that ran during the Super Bowl with Melissa McCarthy in it. Yeah. It wasn't the funniest. I mean, it was funny. Like, Melissa yeah. McCarthy's yeah. deserved. But it wasn't the funniest one. It wasn't the most well-produced one. And yet it was the most watched um, ad on on YouTube. I <laughs> so love that. I feel like people are wanting to reflect back. I mean, yeah. the, the work that Ari has done in the shift from that aspirational Victoria's Secret model glossy body to yeah. authentic marketing has really mm-hmm. driven their business. Yeah. Mm-hmm more companies are just seeing that we really need to share people as they are yes and be people where they are mm-hmm. instead of just this like you could look like this if you buy into this brand it's like yeah. no you look like you and yeah. this brand is here for you so those are the that's kinds why of we decided to put made that's... for skin folds on the freaking packaging yeah because right. that's what it's because made right for now a lot of people have skin folds <laughs> yes <laughs> and yes they should smell like a beautiful coconut vacation exactly (laughs) so let me ask you this do you think so the near it's like the chicken or the egg creatives and photographers for decades have been told and taught that bodies have to be presented as perfect Mm -hmm. in their marketing like even if the photo is delivered raw there's a company internally or somebody internally who's editing these photos to like skin smooth decellulite no birthmarks, no scars, no anything. Do you think it's a push from the brands or the creatives for this change? Like, do you think it's coming from internally, like within the brand or creatives pushing to have representation that shows all bodies and things like that? Boy, I think it's both. I think right now what it is, is an individual within the company becomes the hero who... Mm. Uh, drives the change, sees Ooh. the opportunity. Got it. Love that. So it could be on either side of the fence. And as long as, you know, and then that's why it's so important for brands to hire an agency, like the gorgeous agency that has expertise in this field to partner with the other creative agencies. Yeah. We partner with agencies too. I love that. To kind of blend that lens or right. that vision about like hmm, maybe we should steer away from that kind of language and maybe we could try what if we tried right. this you know what if we position, positioned it like that way yeah I can hmm. I can definitely tell from um when a brand is trying to be more size inclusive and trying to show different bodies on their marketing that oftentimes they don't know how to pose plus size bodies mm-hmm. and the way that they have the thin model is this like active, perky, fun, moving, things like that. And then they have the plus size person like sitting on the curb or like, right. or like <laughs> awkwardly positioned. And I, it, it hurts it's my cringy. soul because I'm like, if only you knew that we knew that that's not right. Right. Like we know how our bodies move and we know that the way that you're posing that person isn't authentic. Right. Like you just don't know how to do it. So I definitely think, I think the internal, the hero, the person who's driving that train, I think is good. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to be matched with a creative who also understands the expertise. Right. Because Caitlin, you and I have talked about certain brands that go, they over, yes, um, like voyeuristic kind of, uh, Mm I'm not going to name names here, but like there's certain brands that just kind of flaunt it and just like, and and position bodies that in a way that's almost, it feels comical. That's not the right word, but um, position bodies in a way that's not flattering or it's just too much. Yeah. It's in your face. It's like, it's oh, you wanted representation. Here you go. But they just don't know how to yeah. do it. Yeah. This is the problem. Yeah. It's like maybe maybe even the the core of the 
you know, purpose of that is, is there, but it's yeah. like, I don't really know what to do. I haven't done it right. before. And it's no fault to the creator. It's no fault to the brand. It's like, they're just trying and they failing just forward Caitlin to come over here. And but I, the, <laughs> and that's the thing is yeah. like people like you who are showing up and saying, Hey, we see that you're trying, but tweak it just a little and it'll feel so much more authentic. I think that's right. really important mm. and not talked about enough because mm -hmm. yes, representation is important, but the way it's represented is also very important. You know? Exactly, because it needs to resonate authentically, yes. and it needs to <laughs> create no further harm. Right, <laughs> right, right. I know harm is a harm is a, a a word that's often used in the DEI space, but it's true. You know, because um, you know people in larger bodies are often not a protected class, and yet we've entered quite a bit of um, discrimination, mm -hmm. whether it's in the workforce yeah. <laughs> or on the streets <laughs> or in an airplane know, or at a restaurant with no seating options or right. you oh, name cool. it. Yeah. yeah. You name it. Yeah. There's been so much that if you're trying to connect with this market, which by the way, has $40 billion in buying power. Yeah. Um, you know, you want to, you want to hit a home run or at least you want to get to second. Do it third. right. Well, yeah. and then, like you said, it's the education piece. You can't do it for three months and then go, mm, told you it didn't work. It's like yes. a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like, yeah, it's yeah. the, <laughs> it's the blow up, right? It's like, oh, it's not going to work. Oh, we gave it a, a valiant effort for three months. It's like, do you know how long it takes to unlearn that behavior? Yeah. And knowing that a store is trustworthy and knowing that I can walk in and get my size, it takes mm -hmm. years. Yeah. Years. It's a movement. It's a movement. It's, it's definitely a long game. But, you know, there's definitely, there are also some things that you can do in the short term to mm -hmm. just really remedy um, remedy the situation. Very I mean, much. And the other part of it is, and I think that, uh, what a lot of brands don't know is that there are things that you can do right now, <laughs> right now to start creating this change. And, you know, maybe you do have products that are, you know, for people in larger bodies. You yeah. know, you're not reinventing the wheel here. You're just tweaking how you're talking about it. Yeah. You're adding in these influencers. Your uh, mm. creative campaign is going to include one or two people in larger bodies in positive, you know, ways. So there's, yeah. The, these are just some of the what's, but the how of how to do it, that's where the special sauce is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So to switch, I'm going to switch gears real quick. Okay. That's okay. So what the body. Go wherever you want to go. Go wherever you want to go. <laughs> do whatever you want to do. Do it. Um, I think something is very interesting that I think um, will, if you're open to sharing, would be really relevant for what the body. So are you open to telling the story of how you found out you even had lipidemia? Wait, say it for me. Lipedema. 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 Oh, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's a, you know, a real example of how the healthcare yes. system yep. feels. We talked about this before we started. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is something yes. that I think our listeners need to hear mm -hmm. because it's, yeah. a, it's a really... It could be them. It, it very much <laughs> could be them. Yeah. You know? So, yes, tell us. Absolutely. So, um, as I mentioned before, or as just mentioned before, I am the author of Gorge, My Journey of Kilimanjaro at 300 Pounds. I'm also the author of uh, the Mountain, Way to Being, and I like could not be more public with my journey yes. with my body, right? And could not be more descriptive of the fact that I'm tiny on top and larger on the bottom and like photographed. I've been in the New York Times. I've been on Good Morning America. Yeah, yeah today. today show. Yep. CBS talk, <laughs> um, so many different places. And, uh, and yet even conversations with my doctor about my weight. And I think there's something going on here. It doesn't matter what I do. Nothing ever changes. I mean, I've climbed Kilimanjaro three times. <laughs> I, I struggle I getting up the stairs. So yeah, I, I mean, you, they can't tell you to work out. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I hiked 100 miles in the long trail. I went to the bottom of Havasupai Canyon and thankfully back up again and to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. And so like nothing, you yeah. know, there's this narrative of like eat less, move more. And then like, you know, your weight's going to go down. Yeah. And I've solidly been, been around that 300 pound number for so many years, so right. many years. And you know, I talked to my doctors about it and it's like, well, maybe this is just how you are, which, you know, that's a very body positive kind of response, right. which I appreciate. You know, there have been other doctors, especially when I was pregnant, who were real mm. douches about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and douches it. and yeah. dicks. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, there've been people, there've been people in my medical journey who have not had that. They, they're just all about like, let's, let's get you to slim down. So your baby can slim down, which is bananas. And yes. also just not go with medical not science. Healthy. Not healthy. Okay. Yeah. Bad advice. So all this time, my body's just been either eat less, move more, or this is just how you are. And I, when I, climbed uh oh sorry when i took on 100 miles of the long trail i no surprise was fat shamed along the trail um by a hiker by the name of trash which i'm like thank you again for that metaphor (laughs) right Um, wow yes so i wrote about it for backpacker magazine and um it became the most uh popular piece of content to convert people from readers to paid subscribers the the story i mean this is just an example of how people just want to be seen yeah the story um you know got so many letters to the editor that the editor called me and said like i've never had people respond to a piece like this because of course the the piece had a an image of me hiking from behind a bigger peak, which is this like rock shard thing that yeah. you have to ramble to the top. And then I get an email from someone and they said, have you ever looked into whether you have lipedema? Oh. It's based on the description of your body and, you know, that my legs feel like tree trunks and they're hard to move. And looking at your photo, I wonder if you have the same thing that I do. And so I'm like, huh, cue the rabbit hole. <laughs> right, yeah, right. And so, um, of course, I, I found influencers like um, my friend Kara Cruz. Um, she goes by Pale Ginger Pear on Instagram. Yeah. And that, of course, led me to Dr. Jamie Schwartz and Total Lipedema Care in California because there are just very few doctors who deal with this. And sure enough, I have lipedema, which is, um, you know, a soft tissue disorder uh, where essentially, you know, the the fat cells that I have are, again, I'm not a doctor, so don't take this right, as like right, medical right, right. advice or anything <laughs> like that. But they, you know, there's there's a there's a condition in those areas of the body where the circulation is not great and the lymphatic system is just kind of backfiring, and so you know, it's created this environment where these these fat cells basically like imploded or just they just do not ever change and so i've started the process of having um surgeries uh, out in uh, california in beverly hills california i have to travel from my home in new jersey i have to go away for yeah. a week i have more to do wow. but they've been life-changing because a yeah. i have an answer to like this is why my body is you know sometimes your body is the way it is right sure, that's right. just it <laughs> yeah but, like I've always been like, this doesn't make, my body doesn't make sense. Right. It just doesn't make sense. And now at least it makes sense, you know, from a right. medical point of view. And, um, you know, I've been able to get some relief over the past year. I mean, and it's not like, you know, I think a lot of people when they're like, yeah, she's finally going to get some relief. She's going to be this before and after picture. Right. right? <laughs> but still, you know, I'm still in a larger body. Yeah. I'm still active. I still struggle with arthritis in my knees I but it's right. way better because there's less pressure right. you know the mobility was always the goal um but it to me like when I look back at this past year of healing and the surgeries and there have been so much anger at the medical system that yeah. has just ignored me and just dismissed me yeah. as somebody in a larger body yeah um I'm so grateful that I've been able to get the care that I need yeah and and have some answers and also like you know it's genetic right yes so yeah. I didn't know what I needed to know when I was 12 and so my kids are active and also like really I really work hard to make sure that they have the coping tech yeah you know, thing. and no they have not experienced the level of trauma that I did by the time I was right. their ages right I can't be like when Broke I was a cycle. kid I'm right yeah right. <laughs> it's I a little bit different yeah yeah <laughs> Different. But, but I also, <laughs> but you know, hard times will come their way. Yes. Like as yeah, people in their life, they have to get through stuff. And so mm-hmm. we talk about things and we get support when we need. And we like, Absolutely. you know, buy a tremendous amount of lush bath bombs. <laughs> like, you know, there's yeah. so many. Like, lush, the sponsor, of this. <laughs> the sponsor of this <laughs> podcast. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So 
My question for you is, when you found out, obviously, it, it's jarring because we have to go in and be our own advocates at the doctors. Like, mm -hmm. if you had it all to do again, is there anything you would have done differently from mm -hmm. an advocacy, advocacy standpoint for yourself prior to the knowledge of somebody sending you that email? Is there anything you would have done different or that you wish you could have done different? Great question. Ooh, okay, so is sorry if that was a lot. That wasn't intended. I didn't mean to drop that on you, but yeah, no, it's okay. You can drop whatever you want on me. Okay, so for an animal, that drop it, drop, drop it like it's hot. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so if I knew about lipedema at the time, I would, I would definitely, you know, say, Hey, is this me? and then kind of go up the chain of like, Are you sure it's not me? Are you right. really, really sure? Yeah, yeah, get some more opinions. Um, yeah, I think that I would I would see like if I didn't get the answer that I needed, I would I would go to different folks yeah. in line. Um I would also question now that I know what I know, right? I would also question because there's there's so much talk right now about weight loss drugs and it's really yes. hard and incredibly triggering. Mm -hmm. Um but you know, I would not just assume that if, if somebody came my way and said, maybe you should try this, <laughs> you know, we're even giving it to the kids now. Right. <laughs> Be like, um, actually, yeah. let me not do that. Yeah, or right. let me find somebody who helps to support my care in another way. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and know that there, know that there are options for that. Yeah. Um, there are, there are, healthcare providers who are much more body positive and body neutral mm -hmm. would be willing to t talk through like other ways to take care of your body than just that. Yeah. And so, um, even like if you, um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. There's, there's lots of lists and resources to find body positive or, or um, helping every size practitioners, whatever, whatever, you know, you, you feel supports you. Yeah. I was, that's what I was going to ask is, can, do you know any specific resources if you were to begin that search? If you're, you know, you don't have a lot of resources and you really want to search for the right doctor, how do you do that? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing to Google is just like, uh, you know, either help at every size mm -hmm. practitioners okay. or weight neutral um, yeah. care. Those might be something. In, and it might be tricky to find somebody in your immediate area at first. Um, right. But just keep digging and it, it is going to take some trial and error to see if these the folks that you um, end up meeting with do kind of align with you. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to make sure that I'm sharing in the right way here. Like, yeah. it's not like, you know, I would go to them with a, like, somebody gave me a diagnosis of something like cancer, and I'd go to enough doctors for them to say, no, you don't have cancer. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right, 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 right. I actually do, right? right. Um, it's more like, who is going to treat me like a human yeah. being? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that, it, that, that my weight isn't the answer to all my ailments, right? Like if yeah. I go in for a sore throat, I mean, you, you hear so many stories about people who are like, I think I have strep throat and they're like, maybe you should lose some pounds, right? Or I've been there, done that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. And yeah. so that's what I'm talking about yeah. where people, you know, the, the bottom line here is that we're looking for healthcare practitioners, brands, mm -hmm. partners that see us as human and not just like this equation of eat less, move more. It's yeah. so much complicated than that. Yeah, very, very much that. And I, it's hard because I was, I think I was 30 when somebody looked at me and said, you can ask the doctor not to weigh you. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, you can't. And they said, the hell you can. So I walked in and I said, hey, uh, if you need the weight for medical reasons, per dosage, whatever, I'm okay with being weighed, but I don't want to see it. I actively don't want to see it. And I will oftentimes just turn around if they do have to weigh me. I'll turn around and not look at the scale. And uh, the freedom of knowing that you can be your own advocate and you don't have to stick with the doctor who fat shames you. Yeah, There are a million of them out there. And all you have to do is look for things like um, body neutral doctors or health at every size or things like that. I didn't even know those were words you could put together and search. I think that's right. where I really struggled is like, we want people to know 
It's why we started this fucking podcast. Yes. We want people to know that you can advocate for yourself as a plus size person in a doctor's office. You're worth it. They don't know. They don't live in your body every day. They don't know Mm -hmm. what you feel like. They don't know how achy things are or like... I mean, I was going to a damn specialist for my gut, and he looked at me, and he's like, have you thought about losing some weight? I said, sir, I shit my pants. I'm 32 years old, and I cannot make it to a bath. There has nothing to do with my weight, right? Like, what are we doing? Something's wrong with my gut. Something is wrong with my gut. And so you can be an advocate, and just like how there's uh, inclusive photographers, there's inclusive therapists, you just have to know the words to look for. Also, Mm -hmm. to be clear, they're out of line, and you deserve to be treated like a human being and you aren't less than just because you have more weight on your body. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I period. And also like the standard protocols are not necessarily designed, you know, for the truth of your situation. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, when I look back, would I have had a bariatric surgery, which I have had the sleep surgery, right. Mm. It did nothing for my lipedema because (laughs) you had lipedema. (laughs) but nobody thought to look at that as a you know a thing Mm. (laughs) you know that's that's where um you know it's just not i I hate this term but it's not one size fits all healthcare you know everybody's a human and they come with a whole different batch of issues whatever size they are right really and you can't just be like oh i know it's this when it's Mm. really not right yeah right that's so fascinating. Good. Yeah. It's so fascinating. That was a, it's a great story. Did you, um, and I, you can not, you can choose to not answer this, but did you have any hesitancy about letting people know what was going on in your space? Because your entire career thus far has been, I'm a badass human who's hiked the mountain and I do all the things and I do it scared and all of that. Did you have any hesitancy talking about lipedema or was it something that when it happened you're like I want other people to know that this is a reality for me does that you know that's um that's a great question I'm sure that I had some qualms about sharing it uh and how people would think of me I think also just the idea that last year was so full of surgeries it it's not um you know the strongest image to always be in surgery right Right. Right. But people also want to follow that journey and they want to know how you're doing. And um, I feel like it would have been a disservice not to. I mean, I, uh, you know, have had to kind of walk away with certain kind from certain kind of engagements because my narrative was changing. I was talking about lipedema more. Right. Um, I've had to think also very carefully about how I speak in the eating disorder space about it, because Mm. that can also be triggering because we're talking about surgery on your body that can change your shape and size. Oh, okay. And, um, that's, it's been a little, it's been a little bit of a tightrope, right? Because, you know, you want to share your journey, but you also don't want to trigger folks, right? Mm. Yeah. So my goal was always mobility. Like I wasn't going to, J, Dr. Jamie Schwartz is, is a plastic surgeon and a number of the procedures oh. are, you know, typical names of plastic surgery, but like it's medically necessary covered by insurance, right. <laughs> you know? So right. um, anyway, so I've had to walk kind of a, a tightrope of making sure that I'm honoring other people's experiences while talking about my own. Ooh. So you're such a good that, advocate and, for yeah. that. That's more of the delicate balance yeah. that I've had to play. Um, and also making sure that folks know that, like, when I had a surgery, it wasn't like I was out for, like, four months. <laughs> and then I, like, literally am, like, on my computer the next day <laughs> taking care of business, right? right yeah. So it's – the recovery has its own um, – of, of from a surgery um, has its own, you know, elements of ups and downs. but. Right. Right. But I, I did pretty well through the process. So yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think it, it's a complicated question only because, mm-hmm. like, I want to speak my truth, but I also want to do no harm. Mm. Yeah. You know? You do You're that good at so that. Yeah. well. You do that so well. Yeah. And there's very few people mm-hmm. on this planet that think that way. And yeah, I, I just you. really appreciate the fact that you do. And you're doing it so intentionally and so thoughtfully 
while still being an ally and an advocate for all humans. Like, I think that's really, I think that's really important. It's inspiring. You, mm-hmm. you certainly are one of the most inspiring people Absolutely. I've ever yes. met. Yes. Oh, for stop. Sure. You yeah. guys are the most inspiring people I know. <laughs> I mean, it's one of the reasons why, you know, there's, there's the truth of my body and, you know, Keelan, you and I did that shoot right before mm-hmm. the surgery to honor yeah. the body that, that I've lived in. Yeah. And I still live in the same body. Right. It's just slightly different. Yeah. Right. Not carrying around so much disease tissue. Right. And it's one of the reasons I love working with the Hickey brand, Jess, and what you've created and like this space that it provides all bodies all the time. I mean, we all are existing in this vehicle to get us through the world. And so we have to honor it. We don't always have to love it, you know, body positivity, but we have to honor our bodies and all other bodies in a way that um, gives space to all that we are for yeah. joy. Our, yeah, joy. So our only, only body our, yeah, the joy that was literally, we didn't pick it. it. It picked us. Let's just, let's fucking go. Yeah. I mean, with this is the body. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Let's, you know, thank you, Cara. That's sweet. Also is our an influencer advisory board meeting this Friday? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just said that. Like, I actually don't know that. I answer. think it might be. I think it might be. Oh, we could um, just see you twice yeah. in a Life week. comes at you fast. Maybe. Oh my um, gosh! No, not this Friday. Next Friday. Next Friday. Okay. It's next. She's Friday. next to the computer. Okay. She flustered, sweating. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I should probably put some notes together yeah, for that. Right? Huh? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. And live and die by my calendar. So yeah, it's me next too. Friday. <laughs> um, so I'm going to ask you a um, a question about who is one of the big, most influential people in your world. Who is huh? it that you mm. like look at and you're like, mm, that person sets my soul on fire. <laughs> <laughs> who is that person for me right now there's so many mm. so, oh my gosh like I'm like looking at my ceiling like as if I have this like <laughs> of angels, like oh is it Chrissy Matz because of the way that she yeah. um authenticity the yeah. experience of larger bodies is it Christine Dercole who I've recently befriended she's one of the Peloton instructors yeah. um oh, who just you know I I feel like held me um, with the kinds of classes that she teaches because sometimes I'd show up to the bike just not for a ride but for a pep talk. Oh, um, oh, I love I that. I love that. I don't feel it, you know, like I feel like most people don't know that about Peloton, but it's actually one of the most body inclusive fitness things that I've ever experienced. I'm, I keep, I shared this when I, I did a, um, you did a class, uh, body right? inclusive panel for them. Yeah that uh that so I was just I've always been waiting for the other shoe to drop and like like okay oh surprise <laughs> now we're gonna tell you that you're not worthy of being <laughs> now we're gonna beat the crap out of you and yeah. tell you like, just Lose a bunch of weight yeah. yeah and it's never happened and like they so easily could have drank in like Kool-Aid and and gone down that path and they just never do and thank goodness for that so yes so that's another person. Is it Cheryl Strayed who wrote Wild and was my teacher? Um, you know, I spent three weeks in Chamonix finishing Gorge with her, and she mm. was one of the first people who truly just shared her story with Wild Abandonment, and like her words are what I live by. Yeah. You know, is it is it my daughter's? Oh. <laughs> you know, or yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that. <laughs> You know, who I'm watching them, you know, muddle through this world of all the pressures and just come out into it with their own beings and their own, like, desires of accomplishment, but learning how to kind of navigate all of the life's challenges and kind of seeing that emerge um, you know, bo- not below me, but I mean, like, right, 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 young children. So mm. it's so hard to pinpoint, yeah. But it, it's so important to have these like anchors and yes, who hold you up. I mean, it could be like Myrna Valerio, you know, a dear friend who's an influencer, and yeah. and how much joy it just sees. I see in her and I mm. just get by seeing her ski and like be in Patagonia where she is right now or 
Jennifer Cassetta, who I check in with all the time. She's um, she wrote the Art of Badassery, which is a phenomenal book, and mm-hmm. she's like one of the best speakers that I know. Or any of the members of the Upside, created by Aaron Helber. So I mean, I know I'm getting this laundry list of like people, but like that's the point. I mean, like there's yeah. there's not just one. There's so many. Right? Life there's is so multi-dimensional. Many. It's not there's there's your body, there's energy, and there's all of your trauma and experiences. And I don't think there could possibly be one person for no. us no, all right. in all the stages we've been through. Well, and I think if they inspire you. Our listeners might feel that same inspiration yeah. through those people. And I think it's important to know that there are humans out here that will resonate with us in that a rooted very different way. Yeah. And we always talk about how you need to curate your feet if you're starting yes. this journey of, I'm just trying to feel neutral in my body. How do I start that? Filling your feed with people like that will inspire you to just intuitively start to think different about yourself. And I think that's the most important is like uh, when I started, heck, I didn't, my page was filled with all sorts of terrible stuff that made me feel horrendous about myself all the time. And then I started seeing bodies that looked like mine doing fun things in bikinis and lingerie and, and you felt joy. God, it brought me so much joy. And so I think from that standpoint, I appreciate the share because those are all people that I would then encourage if you're if you're struggling, start there. Start with following people like that. Yeah, I'm gonna try to find while we're talking. There's another like something plus fitness or something like that. Anyway, there's this group of folks who just try different classes as all plus size people. Mm, I they love that. A kettlebell class, and they did one of those. Um, oh, what's it called? I can't remember the name of it. You know, like this big silk scarf. The aerial they, yoga. Yeah. Yes, they had a whole bunch of people doing that and like reminding people that these actually can hold like up to 1200 pounds. I was just going to say that because I'm looking at doing an aerial yoga class here and, mm-hmm. um, I would go, I work, I work out with one of the instructors oh. and Allison is this adorable little, I just, she's like such a nugget. I absolutely adore her. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I do. I, I teach aerial yoga on Sundays. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm totally interested. I said, but here's my, my question. I don't weigh myself. I don't know how much I actually weigh, but I know I'm more than 250 and most places have weight capacities on things. Yeah. And I said, I just am wondering. And she's like, oh girl, they're like rated for 1400 pounds. Mm-hmm. I was like, what? She goes, yeah, you can have multiple people on these silks. And I was like, oh my gosh. So now I'm going to hopefully host, uh, as Caitlin Scott, host a oh. aerial yoga class for people to come and join because the, just the knowledge oh, and the freedom of like, there's something that. that would hold my body in yeah. a way that would feel supportive and like yeah. yummy. Let's do it. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Let's okay. do it as a unit because why not? We just went to a pole play fitness this weekend. It's a um, pole class and their, their um, poles are also size inclusive. Mm. And I was like, and I've done privates with her before, but that was the first question. Is it size inclusive? Can can it hold a body that's more than 250 pounds? Stuff like yep. that is so incredibly important. Yeah. Yeah. You should follow Roz the Diva. Mm. <laughs> She's a great um, plus size pole dancer instructor. Yeah. He's great. Oh, yeah. I, I love that. It's so, it's just like the freedom and the joy that my heart brings when it, when you know it's something that you actually can do. You don't have to yeah. worry about it. And I think it's, I think there's also like a mix of like, you know, I don't only follow like, uh, you know, people in larger bodies. No. I follow things yeah. that just bring me such joy. I was talking with a friend, um, Michelle, about how I'm obsessed with um, skating videos in like beautiful places. So there's <sighs> this one who, um, I think her name is Michaela Carrot on Instagram. And she's just like, you know, she's skating in like a, this amazing lake in Switzerland or around this sunken church tower in oh Italy. God. She just went to Iceland. So I can't Ooh. wait to see what she posts from that. But like, you know, follow things that bring you joy and yes. just like inspire you to move because I'm, um, while well, my knees are still quite cranky, um, I really want to get back into ice skating because, you know, two of my kids are really into it and mm. one's playing hockey and the other one just loves to be on the ice. And I'm like, I've got to get back on. Yeah. I grew up in Vermont and Canada. It's like in my lifeblood. Oh, I love that. I love that. You should do it. Yeah. 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 
Well, this has been lovely. Yes. We so appreciate you. Oh, my goodness. It's so good to talk to you. Likewise. Likewise. Let's do it again sometime. (laughs) So So, um, tell us how our listeners can find you. Of course. Um, So the best way to connect with... um, me is on Instagram at Cara Richardson Whiteley. If um, you or a company that you know would like to do some work in size inclusivity to help attract um, this market that's so underserved, you can reach out to us at the Gorgeous Agency. And uh, the process that we have is a two-part process. We do uh, a needs assessment workshop, which helps to identify the gaps and opportunities in the, the plus size market. And then we also have an audit and action plan and of course, if your t- company can take it from there, then go for it. And, but we also, of course, have services to help um, provide content strategy and research and all the things that yeah. um, we recommend. So those two places, thegorgeousagency.com or find me on Instagram at Cara Richardson Whiteley. And, you know, hey, you might even find me doing something that has to do with hickey <laughs> down the road yeah, <laughs> because 100%. there's so much exciting stuff happening with that yes. brand and uh we love I your support to follow journey with all of you yes mm. yay. yay thank you so much um make sure to follow like and subscribe yeah if you want to listeners got a, a treat today honey I know that was so good. Mm -hmm. That was so good. But thank you for your time. And we're just lucky that you're in our space and our world and our life. And we want to support you as much as we can. So thank you you for being here. Thank you so much. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Bye.